I'm Ralph Sivenor. We're here on behalf of the Central Station Alarm Association, CSAA, NBFA, National Burglar and Fire Alarm Association, and SEA, the Security Industry Association. This is a cooperative effort on behalf of ARIF, and we're here in uh, Lanai, uh, an island of Hawaii. This is the Central Station Alarm Association meeting, and I'm pleased to introduce an old friend of mine, Les Gold. Les has been in the industry for many, many years. And uh, Les, we have a few questions for you. I'm working cooperatively with Charlie Dosh in this project. And, and um, Les, if I can ask you, how did you get involved in the alarm industry? Oh, when I was a young attorney back in 1957, uh, I had a client who was in the collection business, and he asked me to attend a meeting with a few people uh, who were accounts of his, and lo and behold, they were four or five of the major alarm companies in the city of Los Angeles. And it was kind of interesting because I watched them and these fellows uh, were arguing with each other for some period of time and they asked me if I could help them out and I told them that if they would talk to each other instead of talking at each other they probably wouldn't need me to help them out but with that sage advice they offered me a retainer of $25 a month to represent the California what was what is now the California Alarm Association which I accepted and uh, have represented uh, the industry ever since. So you've seen certainly a lot of changes many changes. What, what are you currently, you went from, from issues as far as acquisitions to legal contracts, and you've seen a lot of that change over many years. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I first started, there were two basic issues. Uh, one is a common issue which we all have today, false alarms. And uh, in those days, in, particularly in Los Angeles, they had trouble with the police department, the police commission, because of false alarms. Uh, the issues then are no different than they are today. Uh, the other, of course, was the telephone company. Our, our principal matter had to do with the rates for private lines, uh, McCullough Direct Wires, and that was, or those two were probably the principal issues that we're faced with. Uh, certainly in terms of a major change, uh, I think the industry has become a, a, a lot more professional, and I always recall that during one of our infamous rate cases, the executive vice president of Pacific Telephone uh, over lunch, I believe, was said to me, uh, Les, your alarm industry is 100 years behind the times, and I corrected him, and I told him probably 50 years behind the times. Uh, but I think we're catching up. Uh, and of course, uh, phone issues are really not as important today as they were then uh, because of the digital communication. I think we've eliminated the uh, uh, principally important issues. Charlie? I have one for you, Les. Uh, we've known each other many years, and I've, I've admired what you've been able to do. And let's say that you were made the, the uh, person of the decade. Let's look at it that way. What is the one thing you would let the audience know about your accomplishments and the alarm industry? What is it that you might be able to focus on? You know, it, it's so hard because over the years, uh, it's so hard to answer that question. There have been so many issues that we've worked on. Uh, and, uh, but, um, you know, the, I think the rebirth of the industry was back in the 1960s when uh, uh, ADT was broken up by the Justice Department and gave so many of the companies the opportunity. And, and why do you feel that was broken up back then? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, ADT is going full circle. They, they had, and again, I don't know exactly, for some of them, 85 95 percent of all of the central station alarm business in the United States. And, uh, people objected to it and uh, Noah's story came in and uh, he felt that it was time to break up ADT and uh, uh, broke it up and I think it was really the birth of the alarm industry as uh, we know it today. There were so many issues and just, uh, you know, with, uh, with ADT, uh, I guess I was instrumental in getting ADT to join the, uh, the associations, the National CSAA. At one point they would not join any associations. And then I was engaged at uh, that time. I was the attorney for the NBFAA representative for about 25 years. Uh, I went to uh, the principals at ADT and got them to become active in both of the associations, uh, which they did. Uh, but you know, over the years, there's so many, so many areas where we were involved in. Uh, uh, we represented the uh, Morse Company and their action against AT and T as a result of a polling computer. Uh, Ron Spiller was uh, very, very actively involved in that. We were successful in that lawsuit. Um, the SACOM company out of Japan, when they came to the United States, they uh, engaged me to represent them. Um, we had uh, Protection One. Uh, we actually were the attorneys who represented Protection One. Uh, when they started, uh, we actually took the public and we 
sold them to Western Resources. Uh, uh, Jim Culver, who I think was another principal player in this industry, uh, at one point uh, when Jim sold his company, uh, he moved to Australia and he liked living in Australia. He called me up and asked me if uh, I knew the company available in Australia. And just, and just then I had a, an inquiry from a uh, finance company or private equity company in Canada. And they were looking for someone to run a company, and I put uh, they and Jim Colbert together. And I had just recently received a, uh, uh, a, uh, a fax from a bank in Australia where they were looking for a buyer for a company to take over. So I put them together, and uh, they uh, that was our Australian function. Jim was there for a couple of years, uh, came back to the United States, started a company here in the United States, uh, bought security a link uh, from. The uh, Southwestern Bell, which was Ameritech, turned around a few months later and sold it and perhaps made the largest profits than anyone yeah, I think this is one of the things that I think that, uh, that amazed Time, me. I think, what's that? I know that you, uh, I, I admire it again, the, the things that you have done. One of the things that, that, that I've seen is that you've made a lot of people rather wealthy in this industry because of you, with your legal background. Uh, if you had one great memory that you might be able to bring us up to date on, is there anything in particular that you might be able to tell us about that? Well, it's well, the greatest satisfaction I have is seeing our clients succeed. I see Ron uh, Spiller sitting in the foreground laughing, and we made Ron wealthy. Because <laughs> when Ron was fired from his position, um, he engaged us uh, to negotiate his exit agreement with his company and uh, we were successful in making Ron a very wealthy man so that he can go to work for SIA. He didn't have to earn money anymore, and he was able to get involved in early retirement. And so uh, it's always given me a great deal of satisfaction to know that we have helped make Ron what he is. That's terrific. That's, great. That's terrific. A question uh, you mentioned about the uh, deregulation or uh, the breakup of, of some of the larger companies. And certainly we know that back then we had ADT, and we had Grinnell, we had uh, Western Electric, we had uh, uh, Holmes, and, uh, and the uh, judge broke up all those companies. But it seems it's almost come full circle now that all those companies are effectively under one, uh, one roof now. So paint a picture for me in the next year, in the next two years, the next five years of where you see the industry. Well, if, uh, if they're going to go full circle, they still have one more acquisition to make in New York. But uh, where I see the industry going, I, as I said, I think the industry is becoming much more professionalized. Uh, I think uh, with uh, ADT and Tyco, it's going to be very interesting to see where they go. Uh, I'm not quite sure where they're going to go. Uh, it looks to me as if they're looking to develop a seamless organization uh, and to be a full service organization. Uh, but I, I think this uh, industry is really coming into the 21st century. Uh, certainly, uh, electronics, the computer age has become very much a part of this industry. Uh, and with the uh, work that the associations are doing, uh, I think that the greatest change that we will see, and I, I, I think I can put it very succinctly, for years, uh, when I told people I represented the alarm industry, they always said, oh, because they always associated the alarm industry and the alarm systems with something bad. Uh, with the advent of presidential security, people started thinking in terms of peace of mind, and all of a sudden it became positive. Now, or more positive, now with uh, the professionalism uh, that the, and the technology that the security industry has really adopted, I think people will begin to really think in terms of the security industry on a much more positive note. And I think it will be a tremendous impetus for the success of the industry. Is this, uh, is this still an entrepreneurial business, do you find? Or, or do you think it's uh, mass marketing, i.e. large uh, conglomerates? Uh, I think mass marketing has helped and it's hurt the industry. Uh, the industry has always been entrepreneurial because it is so easy to get into the industry. Traditionally, you can get into the industry really uh, out of your garage. Uh, you know, hammer, nails, contacts. Uh, but still, today, when you look at what's going on and, and what I see when I listen to people in this industry at the association meetings, the intellect uh, and, and the training has become so advanced uh, that I think even though the entrepreneurial aspect is going to be important, 
uh, I think it's going to be uh, much more institutionalized than we've ever been before. And as part of that, do you see any opportunities that existing companies that we now know the platforms that they should go into other fields? Well, everyone uses the term bundling, for example. Well, I, I think it, it, it's not bundling only, but if you look at integration and all the other services and the digital video, uh, I think the opportunity to expand well beyond where we're at. Uh, I think when you look at the companies, the private companies today, the ones that are most successful are still principally providing alarm systems. Uh, some are involved in some fire, some are not. Some are involved in cameras, some are not. But I think when you go beyond, uh, you know, we've talked about smart, the smart house for years. It hasn't happened. But with all the services which you can tie into security, uh, I think you're going to see a tremendous uh, enlargement uh, and expansion uh, from within. I see. One of the things that I've heard you speak many times, you have uh, some stories. You have a, 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 a successful career, and I'm sure that you must have some uh, anecdotal story of some sort that you might be able to relate to us. Well, you know, there are so many. And some are really. comical, too. That's what well, <laughs> the most comical one I remember was really re very early in my career uh, when these companies were so entrepreneurial and they were never concerned about antitrust or pricing or anything else. And I was at an association meeting one day and one of our illustrative members got up and he was saying how we have to stick together and we have to establish a price that everybody can live with and we have to stay with that price and we can't undercut each other. And while he was making his speech, someone came running in with a flyer that was on his windshield in his car uh, where this fellow who was making the speech, his son, was passing out flyers selling systems for a dollar and a half a piece. Uh, so uh, I, I always remember that. Uh, it, it was, uh, it, it, it was uh, something that will always stay with me. But, uh, you know, in those days, uh, you know, people were entrepreneurial. Uh, I, I've got literature which, uh, uh, you know, you bear because in today's day and age, you couldn't get away with sure. Les, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate having it. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you so great. much for Thanks. inviting me.